Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program. In this episode I'm testing out a version of Launcher 1 from Virgin Orbit. It is an air-launched orbital rocket uh, launching off of a 747-400. I have made some custom parts in Blender for this purpose. Uh, you can see the 747 body, for instance. This is in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 right now, but it doesn't quite work out in 1.3.1, so we're going to go to 1.2.2. I made, I put together the model in 1.2.2 and then brought in the craft file into 1.3.1, and that might have been what caused the problem. Uh, but I wanted to use 1.3.1 because that allowed me to use Textures Unlimited, which is what's giving the shiny features on the 747 as well as Launcher 1 itself. On Launcher 1 itself, I haven't made the fairing yet. I wanted to test everything else before I put the fairing on. And uh, it, it's a good thing too because it took a lot of testing. So right now I just have a procedural fairing on it. That's why uh, the fairing is sort of a different color than the rest of the body. Also, the fins are B9 procedural wings and not custom fins. I may change that. I have not so far gone into making aerodynamic surfaces in Blender and importing through Unity but I might start on that. And other things I want to do are the 747's wings and vertical stabilizer, which are all procedural wings right now. So that's part of the plan going forward. Oh, so the 747 itself isn't quite finished. It doesn't have the winglets and it doesn't have the flap helpers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I wanted to put those on, but um, maybe I should create some Fowler flaps, full flaps, in Blender. Anyway, this is what happens in KSP 1.3.1 when I try and separate Launcher 1 from the 747. That does not happen in 1.2.2, uh, so we are going to go into 1.2.2 to do it properly, but for some reason it goes like that backwards, and I don't know why. And maybe it has something to do with importing the craft file from 1.2.2, and I should have just rebuilt it in 1.3.1. But that was too much of a hassle, and since I was trying to do testing, I decided to just go ahead and go back to 1.2.2. So here we are in 1.2.2, the body of the 747 is not quite as shiny, it's gray. And um, Launcher 1, well, there isn't as much of a gap between the fairing and the body now, uh, because the body isn't shiny, it isn't using Textures Unlimited, which has PBR shaders and everything. Uh, this install does have engine light, which will be very prominent uh, in the visuals. Now, of course, I did test out the 747 without Launcher 1 first, and it operated normally, except for the runway takeoff speed, which had to be higher than usual because FAR basically treats all wings like F-104 wings, like razor thin. So it doesn't really get the whole low speed, high angle of attack situation that we have on takeoff, especially with these heavier aircraft. But still, it can get off the ground. Interestingly, when I attached Launcher 1 to it though, it started turning right. I would have thought that it would turn left. But it has a tendency when you're going slow, or when you're just starting out, um, to go yaw right and the rudder can't handle it. And then I eventually am able to get it back on the runway and uh, take off from there. But it's an it's interesting phenomenon, and I'm not entirely sure what's up with that. As we release Launcher 1, see, that's how it's supposed to release. But that's not the end of our problems. Um, now, the fins, I had to size a little bit bigger than Launcher 1's fins because otherwise the center of lift goes in front of the center of mass. I'm not sure why. But, even doing that, even resizing the fins just a little bit bigger to make sure that center lift is behind the center of mass, it's very difficult to handle this thing. It doesn't have the nice big wing of the Pegasus rocket, and relies more on the gimbling of the engines. Uh, the first stage here does gimbal, the Pegasus's first stage does not gimbal. It relies completely on the aerodynamic surfaces. Um, here, there's no avoiding the fact that the engine has to gimbal. It is running off of kerosene and oxygen, whereas the Pegasus is a solid rocket motor. Um, so this is two stages of kerosene and oxygen. Pegasus is three stages of solid motors. And, but it's still hard, especially when it approaches the speed of sound, to handle this. Um, uh, you'll note that when it first starts out, it tends to head downward, 
even when I'm starting to point upward here, the the velocity vector doesn't tend toward where I'm trying to point. Instead, it's tending downward, and it's a little bit of a struggle to pull it up. And that's basically because we're not getting enough lift. The Pegasus has that nice wing to work with that gets more lift and doesn't have this problem as much. Uh, but I had to be very careful. Don't worry, I eventually figure it out. But it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of practice to fly this thing. So there we had the 747 pitching up as well, starting it off pitched up. Uh, but this is flipping. The little fins just don't provide enough control. I've only got three degrees of gimbling on this engine, so that's another thing. If I add more gimbling to the engine, maybe it'll be easier to handle. And there might be other tweaks that I could do. But there we seem to have it. But we're still not quite supersonic yet. And... and it, it, oh, it's going straight up now. Well, that could work out for us. At least it's going in generally the right direction. I wanted to get to staging at least. I doubt it with all the flippiness that I would uh, be able to get to orbit. But at least we could get some progress and just make sure that staging operates properly. So here we are. And separation. A little bit of a kick there, but otherwise fine. I noticed that the electron rocket sort of has a kick too. Uh, we've got a bit of a floaty payload that happens when you have a procedural tank on a procedural fairing base. It uh, likes to have the tank float up. Gotta check on that in the VAB. Anyway, I did not make orbit there, obviously. It was pretty clear that we didn't have enough delta V. Here, it was looking alright-ish. But it's very twitchy. And eventually... I think it, it just goes too far. Eventually I also tune down the sensitivity of the control surfaces. Yeah, alright. Especially on roll. I wanted to tune down roll. So here we go again. And this time, again, trying to keep it as close to the prograde vector, but we really need the prograde vector to not go south on us. Not really south, I mean, you know, straight down. So you can see it's below the horizon there, and we need it to get up. So I can't point directly at the prograde vector. I need to pull up a little bit, but I don't want to pull up too much such that I stress everything out. And that's the delicate balance here. KOS is actually better at this sort of thing where you can just arbitrarily tell it to not stray away from the prograde vector by more than a few degrees and only change um, the pitch and yaw by a certain amount in a given amount of time so it's much smoother and you know my own attempt to control of the joystick is uh, has a tendency to be a little bit rougher so I expect that once I get a KOS script to do this um, we're not going to have so many problems so this time we're on the second stage and we do have enough for orbit but just barely and it really should have more than that because uh, we are carrying about a 500 kilogram payload and Launcher 1 is capable of launching that payload to a 300 kilometer sun synchronous orbit I think uh, it said. So we're not doing a sun synchronous orbit we're just doing a normal orbit straight out from Cape Canaveral. And it should be able to carry a little bit more than that. But here we are, expending the second stage completely. And it's a little bit more than we need, but just barely. So, yeah, 500 kilograms being carried there. I double check on that. I think I separate eventually. And then uh, check on the payload to check its mass. And it's close to 500 kilograms. So a little bit more work to do, but it's close. I did have to guess at the ISPs. And that's one reason I'm not going to do a rocket profile just yet, because the ISPs are just a guess. Though they seem to be a pretty close guess. One way you can judge is just by seeing what kind of payload you loft to orbit. And if it seems like it's a close enough payload to what's advertised, you basically have the ISP numbers right. 
But on this note, and with a little bit of work to do left on the 747 as well as Launcher 1, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.